Thanks for coming back to our last session of Ready in the Middle, the Home Hazard Hunt. We're going to talk about emergency planning. Some of those were looking for some things in the home, but a lot of it we're going to be talking about our emergency contact lists and uh, our supply kit. So let's get started. So as you see here, here's some of our emergency supplies that we have in planning. And that's our fire extinguisher, smoke alarm, and our emergency contact list. So uh, also with emergency planning, it's good to have, uh, you know, your, your flashlights all charged up, have batteries in them. I do have some flashlights uh, that I charge the batteries for them, and I had extra batteries to charge too because I, I thought there was a good possibility that the electricity would go out, a storm was coming, so I had everything charged up. And I later saw online how many people were really worried. They weren't really prepared for that storm to come along, but I was already prepared. I had my lights. I had my weather radio, uh, which also has a, a solar band on it, too, that I can charge up through the sun. So I was ready for that. And, you know, we're always going to have, uh, whether it's winter weather or uh, thunderstorms, that may knock out some of the services that we need. So let's go to uh, preparedness for the whole family. And here uh, you go through and look to just see if you have multiple exits. Now they're not always talking about two doors, but can you get out of a room uh, from a door in a window? So that's what they're talking about with this here. So do you have an, uh, a contact out of state or out of the region where um, an emergency or a disaster might happen, for instance, if a big tornado just swept through the whole community, is there someone outside of that community you can contact who it might be easier for other family members to contact instead of trying to contact uh, that location that might have services down? So having a, a fire escape plan, having your papers in a fireproof safe, these are questions that you can sit down and ask with your, your parents or the adults in the home and they can help you out with that a whole lot. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily know you had uh, insurance coverage unless you really talked with the adults. And you know, one of the things I did when I moved to a new place is I looked online to see if I was in the floodplain, just to see if you need flood insurance because a lot of times that's extra insurance. And I also have a first aid kit. And I go through my first aid kit, you know, we talk about every six months with daylight saving times. I at least do this every six months. I, I look at my first aid kit. I check to see if any of the medications are out of date and I replace those, restock them. And I also use a piece, a piece of masking tape. And I say, hey, I did an inventory of my first aid kit on this day. I don't really write it all out. I just put the dates, you know, 11-1-2021. Uh, so now we're talking about family preparedness and response plan related to public health or pandemics. You know, we've lived through that a bit with COVID-19 uh, in the past. So, but you know, there's, there's public health, um, th you know, things that we deal with all the time. We talk about flu season a whole lot. So flu season comes through your school. Do you just sit there and just hope that you don't get it? Or are you more preventative? Um, do you go out and make sure that you wash your hands consistently, uh, that you have cleaners at home? So if you're in school and there's a flu, um, a, you know, flu bug going around, if you go home, you're cleaning up the place too to make sure that everyone in the household doesn't catch it. So we've been doing things like this, but maybe we haven't really been thoughtful and say, oh, that's that's exactly what I'm doing. So. I'm, I'm drinking water, I'm eating a good meal. Uh, that's the way I'm trying to keep sickness at bay so I don't catch the flu bug. So you just go through each one of these lists and see, you know, do you have a plan, uh, not just a pandemic, but you have a plan that, hey, there's a, uh, there's the flu that's going around. It maybe don't share <laughs> chapstick or something like that. You, you know, what are the things that you say uh, we need to do to make sure that we avoid contact with others in social situations. Um, you know, maybe do we need to swim in the pool or something if a, a bug is going around? 
And so these are things that we do all the time. We don't necessarily just write them out. So just go down your checklist some more. Um, even before the COVID-19 pandemic, I, I already had uh, masks and face coverings in my emergency supply kit. So I was really glad I did because then I could put them on and go to the store and stuff because a lot of the stores, all the stores were making it mandatory and you couldn't get into the store without one and you couldn't find one easily. So I was glad that I had that around. I have an emergency supply kit in my home. I have one um, in my car. I have one on my uh, kayak even, and I even carry a small one when I go bicycling. So I, I'm just prepared for kind of any emergency or accident that, that might happen probably, maybe not the big things. But when you look at your emergency supply kit, you're going to look at a lot of these things and go, there's no way I'm going to go buy a blood pressure and glucose monitoring kit. Um, just find things in, at home that, can, that you use, that you know that, hey, I... I get headaches a lot or something, or someone in my home might have fever. Um, I know for myself, I tend to get a cold every winter. Every winter, I just get a really bad cold, and I'll cough a whole lot, and I really need that cough syrup. And the last thing I want to do when I'm feeling bad is to go to the store coughing in the aisle with all the cold and flu medicines. So this year, I was pretty smart about it. I said, I'm going to buy those things ahead of time. I'm going to buy the cough syrup. I'm going to buy the cough drops. I'm going to buy some um, acetaminophen. Uh, I'm going to make sure I have a thermometer. I'm going to make sure I have my favorite soup handy so I can just open that up uh, and be ready. And hopefully I won't get sick. But you know what? Just in case, I already have it there and I don't have to go out and find it, especially when I'm not feeling good. So I was really proud of myself that one and one of the things I do is I get those uh, inexpensive plastic shoe boxes and I actually put all of that cold medicine in the shoe box and I labeled it with the date of when I got it all so uh, when I do get sick I'll just open up that box and you've got your Vicks Vapor Rub you have all of that stuff in there uh, your favorite stuff that you need so going on with that emergency supply kit you know, you don't have to go out and buy everything, or maybe even if you do, uh, go to the dollar store. I mean, I found inexpensive garbage bags at the dollar store, uh, some tissue, some soap, and I just put it in a $1 bucket. I have a basement, and I keep it all in one place. Uh, a lot of times, we already have trash bags, all of that stuff at home, but they're just in the kitchen, in the bathroom, in a hallway closet, and downstairs, or in the garage. So if you can get all of those things together in one place, uh, especially the place that you'll probably shelter, if there's um, a, you know, a bad storm or something like that, you'll have it all there, including a flashlight with extra batteries, your cell phone charger, uh, things like that, especially if the electricity goes out. And I like that it makes us think a little bit more which I didn't think a little bit more that, hey, have something down there that can be an entertainment source, um, magazines, some games. Uh, think about um, everyone in your family, not just yourself. You know, little kids need little toys. Pets need their own toys. They need their own food in that emergency kit. So have that plan of phone numbers. So many of us have a cell phone. I know I do. And I really don't memorize numbers as much as I used to. So... Uh, having them written down in a place is really great, especially if your phone doesn't work or you need to give that phone number to someone else. So uh, here we've dealt with pandemic where we've had supply chain issues, which means so many people went to the grocery store and bought up toilet paper and there wasn't enough for everyone else. So how do you deal with that? Do you have, um, are, you, are you planning for that possible? And a lot of times we can't plan for things we don't know. Who would have thought that toilet paper would have gone out? Or I remember I tried to look for corn, canned corn, and I couldn't find that. It was just crazy. And I had um, just adopted a, a puppy and it was really hard to find dog collars and stuff. So some things you really can't plan for, but 
to just have a little bit of a backup at home of some of the things if you can uh, that would be great to do so I uh, just keep on going through the list and I know we've talked about how we can prevent sickness that's a great thing to do wash your hands just try to stay safe and like I said all of these are not a, a cookie cutter solution what works for me and my family might not work for you and your family my supply kit since I live in the in a city where I can easily get out and walk somewhere if there's um, a tornado that goes through uh, when I lived out in the country before that necessarily I couldn't do that and I don't think we should all go out and get tons of uh, water or supply I know in there I think I missed that in one of the slides it said have um, two to four weeks of water that's a that's a lot of water but at least I do know I have enough water that if I'm interrupted for a few days I have some water down there that I can drink so um, or even if you have a water filter you know I have all my camping supplies down there so I have a camp stove I have camp cots I have all of that in my basement where I can be ready but um, you know I remember uh, September of the 11th and I was working out at the farm and I heard about everything that was going on and uh, you know planes crashing into buildings and I thought I'm going to go get gas in my car just in case uh, so on my way home I stopped by the gas station filled the tank up and made it home and I'm really glad I did that was one of those things that the forethought you know let me just make sure I have everything I need we do that all the time before it snows right we talk about the uh, milk run and the bread run to the store just so we can have everything uh, that's the same thing I kind of thought ahead and I said I just want to make sure that that I can still get around and do things and I'm lucky I did because not only a few hours later there is a huge run on the gas stations and you could hardly find a place to uh, get gas for your car and some of us really need that to get around and to get to services so just kind of having that plan that forethought into some things is what this checklist is trying to to get you to do not that you need to uh, stock up on months of food and medicine or anything else but just have a forethought of what you need to do maybe before a winter storm comes before uh, you know the the tornado season comes what do you need to do to get prepared for that that's what we want you to think about so thanks for joining us on this what you need to do now uh, if you've done the pre-survey you've gone through all this you've done your checklist you don't need to send your checklist in to me you don't need to send your communication plan or a picture or anything of your emergency supply kit but you do the pre-survey and then you'll get a signed uh, statement of completion which is on the 4-H online um, a course and you'll send that statement of completion to me and my contact information is there in 4-H online and then you'll do the post survey uh, but also I forgot to put in there before you do the post survey you're going to join me on zoom and I do have the zoom for Monday at 6 p.m. I think on January 25th uh, the date and all the information is there in 4-H online if you can't make it to the zoom uh, we're going to offer another zoom a little bit later on but let me know so I know how many people have participated in the course thank you guys very much for doing this I hope you think about all the different uh, careers you can have and this will give you some skills in emergency management whether you want to be in law enforcement you want to be a firefighter an emergency management uh, person uh, work in the health field we really do appreciate everybody uh, who are on the front line who are first responders thanks again and I hope to see you at zoom soon